In this video, you're going to learn all there is to know about being on a dependent visa to the UK. My name is Susan. Welcome to my channel. Hi guys! Welcome to my channel. My name is Susan. If this is the first time you were stumbling upon my channel, welcome and if this is just another video you're seeing on my channel welcome back this video is going to be different and it's going to be the start of a new series on my channel where i will discuss my experience with getting a visa to the uk from nigeria if this is out of the things that you would like to see more on this channel please drop a comment drop your questions and I'll get right into them. So, who can be a dependent? Let's start from there. All right. Who can be a dependent? Anybody can be a dependent. A husband can be a dependent, her wife can be a dependent, and their children can be a dependent. The most important thing is that this visa is provided for skilled worker or students who travel to the UK and would like to bring their family along. Now moving on to the second question, how do you apply to get a dependent visa? Now, for a dependent visa, the unique part of this is that you are attached to the main applicant. So, because it is provided for families who can bring in, for families to be reunited with their, um, their spouse who is on a different visa, so it means you can apply during their own application or after their own application now using my experience i you i applied after my husband had gotten to the uk eventually when he left i started to i started my own application so you can so for you if you have if you have the money if you have the time and if you are ready it doesn't matter you don't have to wait after somebody comes in though many people try that route try that route because in you're going into a different environment you don't know how it's going to be you don't know unless you have family here some people are really lucky to have family here to come to meet at the first month but if you're coming here fresh you don't know anybody i would advise that you guys sort of split the journey so somebody has to go first somebody who is the main applicants the main applicant has to come first who will you know get uh, get an apartment get you settled and things like that but it's 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 your choice you don't have to do you don't have to go through that route you you guys can come in together and figure it out as you go but for most people they advise that somebody comes in first so if you are certain that this is um if you're certain that this is something you want to do the main applicant has to come in first so if you are going to come in together you can apply together you can apply for your visas together that means your main applicants have gotten um, a job placement if they're coming through the skilled worker visa or they've gotten an admission if they're coming through the students in visa routes so as long as their own um their own situation is sorted out you as a dependent can now start your own application now in this video to to avoid confusion and you know to make things clearer i'm going to talk based on my experience because i know a lot of people um in nigeria are usually curious as to how you can be a student and you can still be able to bring in your family with you so i think i'm going to focus on that in this video but if you would like me to create a video specifically for skilled worker visa please let me know in the comment section let's move on to the next question what are the steps to take to get a dependent visa all right to make this clear i am going to divide this into two stages i have the preliminary stage and the final stage so let's start with the preliminary stage so in this stage you have to get two things ready number one you have to get um your passports ready i think it goes to that saying you need a passport to travel out of the country and 
it used to be very easy but things have changed with the current um, administration so it takes a while for passports to come in but as soon as you get your passport that is sorted out because you cannot do a lot of things without your passport so as soon as you get your passport you can now move um, on to getting your medicals sorted out now when it comes to the UK you have to get a tuberculosis test done tuberculosis calm down <laughs> you have to get a tuberculosis test done um i know other countries um request for other things i think canada or us request for sportum but i know for the uk they request for a post um they, they request for a negative tuberculosis test results so and you cannot do this test anywhere there is um there's a body, there's an organization that is recognized by the UK government for you to do this. And it exists in um, Lagos and Abuja. I don't know if it exists anywhere else, but I know this, um, these organizations have their branches in Lagos and in Abuja. I did mine in Lagos. And the thing is, you have to pick an appointment date before that time, before going to this organization. This called the place is called IOM. Um, IOM. The full meaning of IOM. I wrote this down because I knew I'd, I would forget the full meaning. Okay, the full meaning is International Organization for Migration. So this organization is in charge of handling medical um, results for those who are going into um, countries like UK, US, Canada, and I think Australia so in this preliminary stage you have to get your um tuberculosis test done by the iom so if you are ready for your travel plans i would advise that um you book an appointment on their website it's very easy to do actually you can do it on your phone you can do it on a laptop or in a desktop the thing is without booking an appointment <laughs> i don't think they will attend to you why it's not like when you get there you can just walk in there are a lot of people coming in daily to get this test done so it's just easier to get there and then when you get to the gates when they ask you that where can we see your printed receipt can we see your appointment dates because they schedule these things by dates by time mine was eight o'clock and by it i'm telling you i got there I got there six o'clock in the morning and we were up to 20 people already lined up so you cannot so imagine coming there without having an appointment and just saying you want to walk in to do it i don't i don't think you want to waste your time especially if you're not living in lagos Ooh. okay i don't think you don't waste your time so it's better to um book an appointment on their website before going in I paid a fee of 58,000 Naira or is it 57,000 Naira? I don't know if the fee has changed, you know, with the way things are going in Nigeria, inflation can affect a lot of businesses, but I know that you can, you know, go with an estimate of 60,000 Naira per person. So if your dependents are your children and your spouse, so you are, you know, you have to pay per person. I know there is um, um, it. It costs less. It costs less for kids, so you won't pay up to fifty thousand naira for kids. The test is really straightforward from there. Once you once you get to the venue, you get you do all these normal things you do in all these places where that requires documents. You you fill in your name. You fill in an online form, and then. You get tested by a doctor, and then you get a free call. You get a consultation afterwards, and then the results you get the results the, the very same day or latest the next day. So the certificate is given to those who are negative, who are tested negative for tuberculosis. If you are tested positive that day, you won't be given the certificate. You will be advised on treatment. Tuberculosis is is curable. And then you will be told to come back at a certain period of time. So once you get that certificate, 
you are done with the preliminary stage so you you are very much that means you are very much fit medically to come into the country so the final stage involves you applying for the visa now application for i don't know how it is to be over the years but thanks to the internet you can apply for your visa online you can do it by yourself or you can hire agents travel agents um immigration agents to do it for you so you go to their website i'll put the link to their website in the description box or on the screen and then you once you are once you are ready to start applying you fill in necessary information now the thing about applying on their website is that you you once you've submitted you cannot go back so you have to be very careful so most people even prefer giving it out to somebody else to do it for them so you have this um, opportunity to to check to you know sort of review all the things you have filled before you submit so if you know that you can't undo that by yourself i would advise to hire somebody to do it for you so after applying for the visa on the website of course you have to pay a certain amount of money i'm going to drop um, i'm going to t tell you the exact fee right towards the end of the channel because i did like a total estimate of all the amount of money you have to pay but i know for a standard visa you pay close to 400 you pay more than four close to 500 usd so that is for a standard visa if you want a priority visa you pay more than that but i think for dependents you cannot choose a priority visa i don't think so you can only choose a standard visa which means the decision will be made on your visa within 15 days 15 working days so that's the um, that's the whole waiting period for visa application so after filling the necessary documents so they ask for your name they ask about your information they ask about your um your address they ask about your occupation your parents information they ask about your main applicants information as well the school they are they are in the school they are studying in in the uk they ask straightforward questions really just normal um information that they need to know about you and then once you are done applying and you've submitted you can download the application page and then print it out and hold it together with your tuberculosis certificate so you take these documents to a place called tls i think it's called a teleperformance company it doesn't really have a full name it's called a teleperformance company and it is located at lagos and abuja so tls is like an intermediary between the applicant you and the home office in the uk so they are the ones to sort of um, upload your document to the right channel where the decision will be made on your visa. On their website, you will need um, a lot of documents to um, submit. Either choose to submit it by yourself or you, you, you choose to submit it at their office. So if you choose to submit it by yourself, it's called self-service. If you choose to submit it at their office, it is called assisted service. I choose assisted service. And let me tell you why I choose assisted service. I don't like to make mistakes. And I don't like to put things by chance. Because you are handling documents that need to be um, presented in a sort of light and if you upload them yourself I don't know most people do but you don't you have to be very careful I, I my husband just told me you know what well, just do assisted service you just have to pay like 11,000 more after applying for your visa but when you once you get to the TLS office they are the ones they will just collect the documents from you and then they will help you upload it straight i think you understand so if you if you 
prefer that sort of route where you know what you are when you, you we want to be sure that you've ticked all the boxes i think you should go for an assistant service and the thing is even if you choose self-service you still need to come to tls the only difference is that you instead of you giving them your documents because you've already uploaded uploaded it online yours is just to come for your biometrics but if you do assisted service they will first upload your documents they will scan your documents give it back to you give you back the original copies and then you go ahead for your biometrics so that's just the difference what are the documents you might ask that tls will ask you to bring as a dependent you need to bring your tls appointment letter because you need to pick a date like just like you did in iom you need to pick a date before you go to the tls you print out that tls appointment letter you print out your visa application form i think that's a given you print out your you do a sort of like a photocopy of your passport take the passport along with you very important and then you you also print a copy of your bank statement containing your proof of fund you're going to print out your ihs payment receipts ihs means immigration health surcharge it is basically like um health insurance so you have to pay to you have to pay for that insurance before you come to the country because as a dependent you you need to have um enough money to take care of yourself you, in fact before you finish applying for your visa on ukvi website you are going to pay for your ihs I'm going to tell you the price, the total amount of price for all these things later in the video. So after paying, you are going to print out a receipt. It contains a reference number. So another thing you need to print out is the copy of your main applicant of admission offer letter. So you provide an offer letter, you provide your main applicant cast letter. Every student has a cast number. Before you even apply for a visa, they need to see that cast number. And the cast number is given to you by the university that you want to apply to. So that cast that cast number you need the cast letter you need you need it during your own application as a dependent and also you need your main applicant's passport so of course you can't get their original passport so you can you have to come in with like a scanned copy of their passport you need your main applicant's <clears throat> handwritten consent letter so they need to write a letter addressing it to the home office I think saying that they are aware of this um, application oh. and that consent letter has to be handwritten by your main applicants and you you also need a tuberculosis certificate from iom please don't forget to bring that certificate you need you need it and you also need to come with your marriage certificate as a dependent you're married they need to see a proof of marriage so come with your certificate and if you are a woman who changed her name, you can come in with a proof of change of name that you did at the court and um, the one we um, you need to publicize on the newspaper. So you can come with those things for scanning. Just come in with a proof of relationship. And if you, after coming in with all this um, list of documents, you are you're set you're set to go yeah that's just it those are the documents you need to come in come in with so moving on to the next question how much does it cost to apply for a dependent visa so for tls you have to pay for certain things you have to pay for um sms alerts you have to pay for courier service that is if you are not living in lagos and you don't want to come back to lagos to get the um to get the letter so you have to pay for courier service to bring it down to wherever you are. Even if, by the time you get to TLS, they're going to ask you that. Would you like to come back for your letter or would you like courier service to bring it down to you? I paid a total of 20,500 Naira, which covered the cost of SMS alerts, assisted service, courier return of my passport and visa application results. For my visa application, for a standard visa, you pay 489 USD. You now convert it to the, um, the exchange rate of today's Naira. So, 
I don't like to think about Naira in that light because it can be very embarrassing. It's just four hundred and eighty nine dollars, but then when you change it to Naira, it becomes this huge amount of money, and you know there's really nothing you're going to do about it, unless you have, um, unless you have um, dollars stored somewhere, which most of, most people don't. So you have to convert Naira to dollars, and it's usually a loss, honestly. IHS costs nine hundred and ninety US dollars, and it's covers for a year that i'll be here the duration of the amount of time that i'll be on my dependent visa so if you are going to stay so let's say your husband or your wife is on a student visa and the um, degree the master's degree is going to take like two years to complete so you have to pay ihs of two years so like <laughs> this thing is like, <laughs> You need to you need to be prepared so it's very important that you you know watch videos like this and then iom costs me fifty seven thousand eight hundred yeah i think i i said that already fifty seven thousand eight hundred naira so the total estimates when i converted these things to um to naira it was like eight hundred and seventeen thousand naira so you and the thing about Naira is that it's always fluctuating. So, and then you are going to, you are going to show that you have a proof of fund in your bank account. But once you have that, and you have, you do not falsify any documents. You are truthful in your application. UK visa application usually goes positive. Sometimes you can even get a decision on your visa before 15 working days. Sometimes. On, 15, on the fifteenth day, you get your you get that email that a decision has been made. If you if you place these things in this sort of stage like I did, it will help you mentally to prepare ahead. Because um, my husband and I we had to go through this process of waiting. There was long there was a long period of waiting. There was also the long period of planning ahead. And there was also the long period of, you know, hoping that things just go according to plan. So I really hope, I wish you the best of luck when you are applying for a visa, whether you are applying together or you are applying after your main applicant. I wish you the very best of luck and I will be dropping more videos like this. So if this is the sort of the kind of videos you like to see because you need information about these things please let me know in the comment section i'm going to get right into it i'm going to answer your questions this is the very end of this video thank you so much for watching and i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please subscribe if you haven't please hit the like button it is very important and it will mean the whole world to me if you guys do and um yeah so my name is susan you can call me susanna or you can call me sue you can call me black pro writer thank you so much for watching this video and it's a bye for now